Hi guys, Hayden VK7HH here for Ham Radio DX and today we're going to be looking at the IC9700 and the Leo Bodner Electronics IC9700 injection board. Uh, you may have seen a couple of my videos in relation to the drift issue on Whisper using the IC9700. Uh, the uh, radio does have an inbuilt uh, 10 megahertz calibration function uh, but you cannot lock this to a 10 megahertz source or uh, GPS for continuous uh, GPS locking. So that's where the Leo Bodner board comes into it. So basically what the Leo Bodner board is, is a little PCB, which is very small, requires no soldering inside the radio, and is just a little PCB, as you can see there, little SMA on top, a couple of uh, resistors or no, a couple of capacitors on the top there, surface mount and on the bottom an inductor and probably a couple of resistors or capacitors on the bottom there. So that's all the little board is that you get from uh, Leo Bodner and the uh, idea behind this is that you install it in the radio above the uh, oscillator can and that will override the internal oscillator and it will lock to this instead using an external uh, frequency source uh, which I'll show as well. So we'll have a look at this a bit later on, but uh, an installation of this board. Uh, so that's the Leo Bodner injection board. But if you buy the GPS as well, it comes in a little uh, nice little black case. Uh, GPS antenna, a little GPS mouse antenna with an SMA all wrapped up there. Uh, USB programming cable. Uh, you need that to input the data into the GPS. And this is the GPS itself. It's only very, very small, tiny little, uh, about the size of a matchbox. And this will you plug a GPS antenna into one side and the other side will output the 49.152, uh, I think it is, megahertz frequency to lock the IC9700. So what we'll do is we'll go through the steps of installing it in the radio. Um, I've got uh, a couple of modifications, or an existing board in this radio, which I'll have to take out, but I'll describe that uh, as I do it. And then we'll uh, show about installing that uh, PCB, programming up the GPS, um, and uh, seeing what the results are and if it uh, stops the drift issue. Uh, I did forget to just mention that the Leo Bodner board can be purchased from leobodner.com. Uh, just have a search on there for the IC9700. At this point in time, the IC9700 injection board is 25 uh, pounds, and the single output mini precision GPS is 99 pounds. Uh, you can use uh, your own external frequency source if you have one capable of generating enough uh, output uh, to lock the radio, but uh, I purchased the the, the G, uh, Leo Bonner GPS uh, just for that purpose. So uh, we'll go ahead and look at how to install it in the radio. Okay, so I flipped my 9700 upside down and the first thing we need to do is remove the screws off of the bottom cover. Now, they may look like Phillips head screws, but it's not a good idea to use a Phillips head screwdriver because they are not uh, Phillips head screws. I think they're a special uh, Japanese uh, screw head. I think uh, J4 comes to mind, but uh, you can look that up um, uh, online to find out what uh, screw driver to use. I just found uh, in my set that I've got uh, a, a screwdriver head that seems to sit well and doesn't burr out the, the screws. So I'll go ahead and uh, take out those screws. Now, I don't need to take out the screws in the rubber feet or in the stand, just the three along the top, one in the center and two at the back. Oh, also, in addition to those screws uh, on the bottom cover, I did neglect to mention that you also need to remove the two, uh, three screws on either side of the bottom cover on each side of the radio. Uh, 
Okay, so having a look inside the radio now, you can see I've got the little black cover that covers the oscillator here at the top with a little uh, SMA lead that goes off to the back. For those that haven't modified their radio, they will find a little short lead like this that plugs uh, into the back and plugs onto the board at this point just here. So uh, the reason that I had this, I'll just take this cover off and you can see the little coupler board that is underneath. This is quite stuck down with plastic, but it can be removed. You can see there that I had a little mini kits uh, coupler board. Now the reason that I'm replacing that with the Leo Bodner unit is that I had um, unsatisfactory performance with the mini kits board. Uh, the radio lost lock after it uh, drifted out uh, a while. So I'm going to try the Leo Bodner board. Plus, uh, this modification requires no soldering, whereas the mini kits requires a little blob of solder just there. So I'll have to remove that. But for those that don't have that and haven't modified the radio in any way, you will find this lead um, sitting in the back. And the first step to do is to remove this SMA and remove it very carefully, prying it off the board at this point just here. Okay, so as I mentioned, this mod only requires uh, the removal of two screws to install the board. So what we're going to look at is placing the board uh, over in this sort of position right here. So we need to remove screw 10 and screw 11, which is uh, behind that ribbon cable. So these are normal uh, Phillips head screw drive, uh, Phillips head screws. So you can go ahead and use a normal Phillips head screwdriver. Now the Leo Bodner board comes with screws and also comes with uh, two little screw holes here to store those original screws. So go ahead and screw in those original screws that we just took out of the 9700. Screw them into the PCB. Okay, now they're all, uh, they've been put in the bottom of that board. What we can do is we can line this up on top of the board such as, as that. So you'll notice what happens is, is the inductor that sits underneath the board here sits down in this can just the right distance away uh, above the little oscillator there to uh, override the internal reference. So let's just pop that back in and we use the screws that have been provided with the board to replace the screws that we took out. It can be a little bit fiddly to get right. Okay, now that the board's been installed, we simply use a the supplied SMA to S, or right angled SMA to SMA bulkhead to connect to the back of the radio. Now I'll just pan out a little bit from this, and we'll see that that spot is that spot that we took out for before. So if we go and install that. So I finished installing the board and uh, just got the SMA uh, connector installed as well. So if we just pan up, you can see there that I've also just cable tied it to some of the power cables up in the back just to give it a bit of support. And uh, the SMA is connected here at the back of the radio. So uh, that's all there is to it really, just a couple of screws and uh, taking off that rubber cover. And uh, that's the injection board installed in the IC9700. So the next thing to do is to test it and uh, see how well it locks and how far out of range it'll go before it stops locking. Okay, so it's time to uh, install the Mini Precision GPS uh, reference clock from Leo Bodner and the uh, software is located on the Leo Bodner website under product downloads. And all we need to do is click here to download on the configuration software. Once that's downloaded, go ahead and run that. Okay, so here's the software now uh, started up. We can see that the current output is set to 10 megahertz. The uh, GPS, uh, we can see some signals from, from some GPSs here in the status window. The PLL is locked. Uh, currently, the uh, if we click on the advanced tab, this expands this section out. We can see we've got the, uh, make sure the output drive is set to 32 milliamps, which is maximum for 
the IC9700. And we've got enable output uh, tick box, uh, which allows us to turn on the output on or off. Uh, don't worry about all of these other settings here. They're not necessary. So the only thing that we really need to change here is the output frequency. So we need to enter in 49152000, which is 49.152 megahertz. Now what that will do is we click set frequency. The GPS will restart and relock. So we can see there now that we have uh, the correct frequency programmed into the a mini GPS reference from Leo Bodner. Now to align the radio we need to turn on the 9700 and let it warm up for five to ten minutes. We know that um, uh, my uh, 9700 is currently uh, been on for a little while and it is uh, as I showed before it was on 1296. Uh, so the frequency that I've chosen is 1296.1. Uh, now I have a frequency generator. Uh, you can do this on, on 2 metres or 70 centimetres. However, I have a frequency generator on 1296. Uh, you can do this next step with a beacon, a GPS locked beacon or some other frequency reference on 2 metres, 70 centimetres or 1296. It just needs to be stable and relatively on frequency or, or as close as you can get. So the next step is to uh, tune your radio to that frequency and we can see here so my generated frequency will be 1296.1 so the radio needs to be tuned to 1296.1 once that's been done move the frequency dial down one kilohertz so we can see now my radio is currently on 1296.099 what that will do is if you open up a waterfall such as WSJT or in this case Spectran, we should be able to turn the RF on my generator and we should be able to see fairly close to a one kilohertz tone. So if this was a GPS uh, locked beacon, we would be able to tune one kilohertz lower than the frequency of the beacon and we should get fairly close to a thousand hertz. At the moment it is 990 hertz so, or 985 so it is slightly off frequency. So straight off if we go and enable the output of the GPS that is connected to the IC9700 so the output of the GPS is connected directly to the 9700 now with our board that we installed we can see there the frequency shifts up to a thousand hertz, a thousand and one uh, in this case. So that is now locked uh, to a GPS lock source. If we go back now to 980 hertz or where the freak, where the radio is uh, currently on frequency, that is the internal oscillator. That's the frequency of the internal oscillator. If we go to the menu and then set function reference adjust, if we start to adjust the fine adjustment of this we can see that frequency move back and forth. So if your radio is off frequency for some reason, you can adjust it here in the menus. The top is the, of course, the course adjustment. So if we adjust that, it adjusts in quite large increments. And if we adjust the fine adjustment, that will get us close. Now, one thing that's interesting about this GPS from uh, this uh, GPS lock solution from Leo Bodner is that it says that lock range is 800 hertz on 1296. So what that theoretically means is we can tune this radio 800 hertz off frequency and it should still lock. So let's give that a go. I'll just move the waterfall here so that we can move this up in frequency. I'll make sure, yep, so that's the way to adjust it up. So what I want to do is enable the output of the GPS, which now locks it at 1000 hertz, and keep adjusting this until it stops locking. And there it is there. So we can see that 1000 hertz has disappeared. It's quite a warbly tone. It's just locking there. And if we turn up the audio, we can hear that it's currently switching between the external GPS and the internal oscillator because it is not sure which one to pick. 
Now, how far off frequency is this? Well, let's disable the output. And look at that. We're over 1.3, almost 1.4 kilohertz off frequency. So that far exceeds uh, the Leo Bodner specification of 800 hertz, which is fantastic. So that's almost 600 hertz higher. So what that means is that this radio will not drop out of lock due to uh, anything related to thermal drift or uh, the like. Um, it's got a lock range of over 1.4 kilohertz, which is, which is really good. So what we'll do is move this back down. Oh, I think I went too far. Just move this back down. We'll get it close to a thousand hertz, which is there, and enable the output. So now the radio is effectively GPS locked, and that's all there is to it. So that is GPS locking the IC9700 using the Leo Bodner board. Um, works really well, much uh, better than I expected. Uh, the lock range is uh, quite wide, so you don't have to worry about the radio uh, warming up and it drifting off or uh, anything like that. So it appears like the whisper uh, and digital mode uh, drift issues have been fixed by the Leo Bodner board. So fully recommend that uh, you get one of these if you wish to install it in your IC9700. Uh, thanks for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe and uh, hit the like button if you found this useful. And I uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one.